Hello, my scrapbooking friends. I'm Trisha at Club Scrap, and welcome to the Shoji Page Kit Assembly Workshop. We're going to have a lot of fun today creating eight gorgeous scrapbook pages with this Shoji Page Kit, and we'll have a very prescribed method of doing that if you're new around here. Um, this is a routine that we'll follow every time we create a set of eight pages, and it's very easy and efficient as well. I'm using my Fisker's Guillotine Style Trimmer and an accordion pocket file to keep myself organized. If you don't yet have one of these, you'll see how it works. Uh, when, when we were together in the class, but if you don't, if you need an alternative, just simply create four piles in front of you, one for each double page spread we'll be working on. Okay, so the first step is just to set aside all of these beautiful embellishments that are included in the page kit, and we're going to take the paper that we have and put it in a very specific order so that we're prepared to trim everything accurately. Um, I'm going to start out by taking just this one of these koi prints. This will be the first paper we'll trim. I'm going to put it face down on my trimmer base. Just take one of them followed by one of these scenic prints. Just gonna put that face down on my trimmer. And then we'll find just one sheet of the black plane. So you have the print that has a black frame around it, but then you should have a piece of paper that's just plain black. Take only one of those, followed by a red plane. And then we're going to take, probably from the back of your stack of printed materials, you'll find one large print here that has a lot of different smaller pieces of artwork on it. Put that face down. And then we'll find another one that has a lot more color on it. And there's one sheet of those. Put that face down. Continuing on, there are two sheets of metallic gold paper. Well, uh, they're <laughs> gold on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which way you place them on your work surface, followed by two purple cardstock. Two sheets of that. And then we'll take the other koi print that we have, put that face down, followed by a red plane. And then another black plane. And then this beautiful uh, scenic print. Okay, so that's the paper in the order we'll be trimming it. And the next thing we'll do is start out by locating our pre-cut photo mats. There should be a dozen pieces of paper in your kit that are ready to go, already sized to fit perfectly a four by six photo, which is the standard for what we develop these days. So I'm going to find those in here and place them in the correct pocket for the layout that the piece will belong on. And start out by just taking only one of the white ones and put that in pocket one and two. Next, find the three metallic gold mats and put that in pocket three and four all three of them. Then the two remaining white ones will go in pocket five and six, one black photo mat and one red. So one of each of these, one black, one red, that also goes in pocket five and six. And then two each of the remaining black and red will go in pocket seven and eight. Now, if I'm going too fast for you, a wonderful solution provided by YouTube is there's a gear symbol on your screen that will allow you to uh, change the speed of my presentation. So if you want to slow me down like to 0.75%, I will sound a little bit tired, <laughs> but I think it's it'll be a pace that's more amenable to you if you're just starting out. And then once you uh, do a couple rounds with me, you will keep up just fine. It's amazing how quickly the skill will develop. Okay, so now it's time to start trimming the papers. Now we're gonna take this Koi print and place it in the trimmer. So uh, the brighter side is on the left. You have this larger Koi fish here and you can see the orientation of the placement in the image right in the instructions on page one, step one. And I'll bring that blade all the way up, slide it under the clear bar here and we'll cut at eight. Before you trim, make sure you stabilize and also make sure the paper is level at the top. And then slide down and cut at four inches. So we just basically subdivided this piece into three equal sizes. Okay, the first two strips that we created, or the last two we created, uh, those will go in pockets seven and eight. And then you have this one remaining piece for layouts three and four. Now these pieces are 12 inches wide, and so is my accordion pocket file. So if this is the first time using that, my recommendation is to place the paper in at an angle so you can still see the numbers on the left side and don't try to jam that uh, paper into the accordion pocket file because you could damage one or the other. <laughs> okay, now the next thing is to take this scene scenic print 
and we're going to place this right side up into the trimmer. We'll cut it eight and a quarter. So find the whole number eight and go to the left one vertical column on here. That puts you at eight and a quarter. And you'll see it's just going to cut to the left of this side of that uh, shoji uh, pattern here. And then slide all the way down to three and three quarters. We're kind of mirroring that. Okay, so this piece and the other one that looks like a mirror of that. Both of those will go in pocket five and six. And then the remaining scene print will go in pocket one and two. It doesn't matter what order things go into the pockets. We'll be emptying them all out completely anyway. Okay, next we're on step three and we're going to take the black plane. And we have several cuts to make on this. We'll start out at 11 inches. Stabilize always. And then nine and a half. Nine and one half. Then slide down to eight. And then six. Take the six by twelve and we're going to trim it into three equal pieces by starting at eight and then four. So that made three pieces the same size and all three of them are used in layout five and six. Then there's going to be a two inch strip on the top of the pile to the right of your blade. We're going to cut this on all the even numbers and make some squares. So that's ten. 8, 6, 4, and 2. 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. Just made a whole bunch of little squares that all of them are used in layout 5 and 6. The very next strip on the top of the stack, place that in 7 and 8. And the next one, 3 and 4. And the final skinnier one, that's going to go also in pocket 3 and 4. Next, we'll move on to the red plane. We're going to make a whole bunch of uh, small strips. I call them paper ribbons, and they're only a quarter of an inch wide. So the most ideal way to do that is take them off the end first by trimming it very large numbers. So the first number we're going to find is 11 and 3 quarters. So that gives us our first quarter inch strip. And then 11 and a half. Give me one more. And then 11 and a quarter. That's my last one, and that size. Then go all the way down to six inches. Rotate this piece again, and we'll do the same thing we did with the black. We're gonna cut it eight and four, and that creates three pieces the same size again, and all of these are used in layout one and two. Okay, now the next larger piece to the right of the blade, we'll cut three times. First one is 11 and a quarter, then seven and a half and three and three quarters. Once again, you're going to have three pieces that are the same size and those will go into pocket one and two as well. Now there will be this small piece and I'm sorry to tell you it is a scrap. It's the only scrap uh, from this entire collection of the papers. There's one little uh, cut apart scrap as well, but you can just uh, dispose of this or set it aside if you think you can find a home for it. Um, now you have these three narrow paper ribbons. I'm going to put one of them in pocket one and two and then one in th pocket three and four and the last one in pocket five and six. So we're gonna share the love of that red a little bit. Okay, so next we have to prepare our cut aparts to cut them apart. And to do that, I just wanna point out the little um, plus, plus signs on the corner, every corner of the cut apart. And what that provides us with is a guideline for the first cut. We're gonna remove about an eighth of an inch from the entire perimeter of this sheet so that we start out exactly with the perfect 12 by 12 uh, paper to trim. So I can see in the upper corner right here where that mark uh, is going to be close to the blade. And then just simply rotate and find the next mark. And this time you should be able to see at the top as well as at the bottom. You'll be able to see where that hash mark lines up with the blade itself. And that's one of the things I really like about this trimmer is the ability to see the blade. Whereas a lot of um, a lot of them, they're kind of covered, so it's really hard to align. Once you've done like one side, the other one is going to naturally trim at 12 inches. You can dispose of the the little eighth inch scraps. Now with those eighth inch pieces gone, we have a 12 by 12 sheet, 
and we're going to position it so the words beautiful things will be in the upper left corner and our first cut will be at ten and three quarters and then nine and a half seven and a half and four and a half <laughs> Okay, now rotate this piece so it's horizontal, and we will trim at nine and six and a half. Take the larger Beautiful Things art that will be used in layout seven and eight, as well as the Darling You Are work of art. That's also going to be in seven and eight. And then our cute little koi fish is in pocket three and four. This next strip, I'm going to put the flowers on the right and trim it at nine inches. Now this larger piece is a scrap because I had so many great things going on, I didn't really need it, but I did use this in layout three and four. Now take this next strip, make sure the red uh, tree graphic is on the right, and we'll trim at nine, six, and three. All right, so the crane, we're gonna put that in three and four. Our vertical journaling prompt in seven and eight. Then the horizontal journaling prompt with the purple shapes, uh, that's five and six. And then our little tree goes in one and two. Now we just have two page titles here. Today's Beautiful Moments, seven and eight. Time stands still best, three and four. Okay, now we have another sheet of cut aparts here. And I'm just going to take a second and remove the pieces from the outer edges just like I did before. Okay, so again, place this into the trimmer with take a deep breath, the narrowest piece on the right. I was being sure you're not cutting through artwork at any given time. And we'll cut at 10 and 3 quarters. And then 10. 9 and a quarter. 6 and a half. And 3 and a half. Now, if you need those measurements, they are going to be listed in uh, on page two of your instructions at the bottom. So we're working with this piece right here, and then I'm looking at the number, the page assignments as we file these pieces. So this goes in layout five and six. So you can do this with or without me once you uh, have done it a few times. Um, we're going to trim this one at eight. Be careful here. You're going to go at four and a half. Okay, so this uh, purple sentiment here, that goes in one and two. Relax, we'll use in seven and eight. And then this the shine one is in five and six. Pick up the next piece and we'll trim at seven and a half. The uh, journaling prompt, one and two. And the, uh, the other journaling prompt in pocket three and four. We try to include four journaling prompts in each collection so that there's one per page. Now the strip with the red uh, border goes on three and four and the purple one is used in pocket five and six. Take a deep breath, one and two. That's technically all the trimming, but before I put the trimmer aside, I'm gonna grab one of the goodies from this collection, this really pretty metallic gold doily. And um, it is about 10 inches. So I'm gonna cut this in half at around five inches. I mean, it doesn't have, to, it, this is an art part, not a science part. So I have these two pieces and we're gonna be placing these in um, the pocket for layout seven and eight. And then this other one, we have two in the kit. I'm just gonna do kind of a larger section. Maybe I'll trim it at six inches so that I have like a one third, two thirds sort of a feel. And then this can go in pocket three and four. If you'd like, you can also distribute the um, the mini black envelopes, one in pocket three and four with the doilies, and one in pocket seven and eight with the others. All right, now I'm gonna set aside my trimmer and we'll start with our dry fit process. So here's what we'll do. Take the remaining stack of plain papers and printed papers that I've had you sort earlier, leave it in the, in the order that we put it in, and you should have the two gold planes on the top of the stack. So imagine your work surface. Here is the center of my work surface. I'm going to take the entire stack of remaining papers and put it to the left of center. And then just take the top sheet and slide it to the right. That's going to give me the base for layouts seven and eight. Now I mentioned we're doing what I call the dry fit. 
So we'll place all the pieces on the layout to make sure we have them distributed correctly, but we're gonna do it without adhesive. And then when you have a little more time, you can actually use your adhesive to put the pieces in, its, in their final place and then add your pictures and journaling. So also turn to page four of your instructions. We're gonna look at the image labeled layout seven and eight, and there you should see the metallic gold papers are the base of those two pages. And also importantly, we're gonna empty the pocket labeled seven and eight. It's tempting to sometimes to empty pocket one and two, but uh, then you won't find anything that you see in this picture <laughs> in the pocket. All right, so let's start out by placing these, um, the four by 12 koi screens, kind of a flush with the outer left and right edges of our double page spread. So both of them get added there. And then we're gonna take one of the trimmed gold doily pieces and just bring the straight edge right up against the koi print on the upper left side and then on the lower right side. So we're just basically mirroring everything that we've got going on here. Now, across the middle of this page, we're gonna add our title. So I try to vary the placement of the title, sometimes top, bottom, or center. So in this case, we're centering it, sort of. <laughs> And then we'll take one of the red mats and put it above the title horizontally, and the other one will go below also horizontally. Now there should be the journaling prompt in here, so I'm gonna tuck that kind of behind here so it just stays off of this element. The pocket I added with the word relax. Now I did take a corner chomper and rounded the upper corners of this relax on the half inch setting. So I happen to have it handy. If you don't have one of these, I believe we did stock a few of these in the store just for your convenience. I really do love the look, the simple look of a rounded corner, just can really add a lot. So when you place this in here, it's gonna give it a nice look. I also used the stencil, this is the screen stencil that came in your kit, and placed it over the um, envelope on this side of it and added white ink. And I'll show you on the finished project. I just used my uh, uh, ink applicator brush and our white pigment ink to stencil a pattern onto the plain black envelope. It looked really cool. And I at, wrapped some red ribbon around it with a really cool ombre red ribbon. And this just kind of gets placed at an angle on the page. Okay, now final elements here for the other side. I will add two more horizontal black mats. Now, if you feel like you're more of a vertical person, you can absolutely uh, shift the direction of this so you don't have four horizontal photos, but I just chose to balance it out this way. You can round the corners again, maybe just on the left side for a unique look on this piece here and place that across the bottom. It fits perfectly. And then this you can tuck a little bit behind here if you wish. I kind of like that look. I added some ribbon on the bottom of this larger piece of artwork. And just to mention, if you have additional pictures you want to add to this layout, by all means, just put it right over the top of the artwork. It's just, this is here to help you uh, finish a page with fewer pictures, but it's also available as a mat for more photos. Same, same with this piece here as well. Just go ahead and add photos as you see fit. Now on the finished layout, I just want to show you how this came out. Um, I made a double looped bow here. It's not really a bow, it's just two loops of ribbon intertwined and added this really, I was so excited to find these, um, this really fancy red medallion. I added it with a black bread from my stash. You can use a gold or you know, just use no bread at all and attach it with bookbinding glue, whatever works for you. On the other page, you can see now the stenciling that I did, what a cool effect that was on the envelope. Just the white ink gives it some nice dimension. And then I wrapped it in a standard uh, bow here with the gorgeous red ombre ribbon. I couldn't believe how lucky I was to find this in the perfect color of red as well for this collection. It's so beautiful. Okay, so now that's been dry fit. And again, that means we haven't used adhesive. It's not finished, but it's placed so that we know everything is where it belongs. And now all I'm going to do is take this, this base of this layout, this gold metallic paper, slide it on top of the layout next to it. So eight eight, seven. I'm going to move this over one purple sheet. Now I have the base for layouts five and six in front of me. And I can verify that when I look in the image again on top of page four labeled five and six, you'll see all of those pieces of art 
that we should find in the pocket labeled five and six. So we'll begin by once again flanking the left and right sides of our layout with those uh, really cool shoji screen here. I love this. It's just so cool. So cool. This will go on the right. Now we'll add this vertical border right here. I believe I left a little bit of the purple just to create some contrast between the two elements. So I didn't put it right next to it. I just left a little space. Then to balance it on the right side of the layout, just take that tiny little piece, that paper ribbon, and then right next to it, we're gonna add our border strip. Again, creating some nice balance there. Now, on this lower left corner, you can start out across the bottom. Let's add two of those squares. Then I'm gonna take a horizontal red photo mat and you'll look at how it fits in there perfectly right underneath the quote credit here it's just such a nice little fit two more squares and two more squares to balance this to the top I just added some loops of purple satin ribbon behind here and I'll show you on the finished layout how that worked out now on top of this red there should be a black that will fit that's gonna nest perfectly there and then on the bottom of the page we've got a spot we can add a, for a journaling prompt there you, there you have it. It's, it's really come together nice. Um, now on the lower, let's see, on the right, we're going to take two vertical mats and there should be two smaller sized black mats that will nest. Then the larger black mat can go down in the lower corner, wrap the corners with the wide satin ribbon if you want, you can round the corners of at least the lower corner of this one and then tuck it behind here. Now what I did on mine is I took a craft knife and I made a slit in this purple uh, frame and slid the upper corner under the slit. I will show you again on the finished layout. So here we go. Here's my wrapped corners. Just simply trim off a piece, I wrap around to the back and tape those the, the satin in place and it's just a wonderful way to use a wide ribbon without adding a lot of dimension. Now here again I, I explained that I took a craft knife and just cut along there to create a slot for this to fit underneath it. I think I went through both layers because I thought to do it after I'd already attached this. I also see I didn't quite make it to the edge here just to allow a little bit of the purple frame to carry over. On the other side, again, I didn't go quite to the edge, just allowed some purple. There you're gonna see the loops of ribbon that sort of add balance to the upper half of this. And then I did the same, carried that through on the left side of the journaling prompt here. So pretty. Okay, so that is layout five and six. Now I'm gonna take my instructions and go backwards, page three, layout three and four. And I'm gonna take the purple base of layout five and slide it over. And then I have the koi screen, oh, so cool. Okay, now in this one, I did the same thing. I, I did a little bit of stenciling on the right half of this red paper just by adding my white pigment ink and an ink applicator brush. So if you're unfamiliar with those items, this is our white pigment ink. If you don't have this, it's a wonderful, uh, vibrant opaque white and you could just pick up the pigment with the brush and I, you know the first time I load it I load it pretty generously and I have one brush that I reserve just for working with white and then you can just go ahead and apply it you can use circular motion and a little goes a long way believe it or not and you can control how deep you want this color to be um, how much of it you want to cover the print. But you can see when I remove this that the, uh, I just did a light, light application, but that shows up there on the corner. It's kind of cool. And I did that on quite a bit of this print, which I'm not going to take the time to do with you. Um, so you can choose to use it in this way or not. It's totally your choice, but I just wanted to make sure you knew how all of that worked. Okay, so next we need to empty the contents of pocket three and four. And I do like to hold all of these elements in my hand while I'm distributing them to the pages. It just always seems a little easier rather than picking things up off the table every time. So we have one of the other portion of the screen 
uh, added to the left side of this layout. We can take the larger portion of the gold doily and place that kind of centerish, top to bottom. Then there should be a wider black strip that's going to uh, mat our title, which is this piece right here. Now, if that title doesn't work for you, you can always flip it over and then add your own title using, you know, whatever materials you happen to have on hand. So we like to be flexible like that. Um, here is the metallic gold photo mat. I rounded the corners on a quarter inch setting of this piece and added it to the lower right corner. And then I topped it instead of having this visible, I added this element with a brad. And I think it really does a beautiful job of carrying through that curved element happening on the doily as well. Rounded the left corners of the crane and then tucked him in kind of behind there and added this bronze fan charm and a bow to this made with the beautiful gold metallic ribbon. I love this is one of my favorite metallic ribbons. It doesn't uh, shed doesn't have glitter in it. It's just like a beautiful metallic thread woven together. Okay, now on the right, I'm going to take the remaining two metallic gold mats and put them horizontally. And then beneath it, you should be able to have a nested uh, border, decorative element here. Above that is the koi quote, which I then rounded the right corners again on the, on the quarter inch setting. Now here's another black envelope. If you wanted to, you could round or you could add stenciling to it, and then I rounded the corners of this element as well. Maybe if you want to put a picture in there, you could do that too. Use this to mat a photo. And then a strip of red, just to carry the red from this side over to this side. Oh, and I forgot. <laughs> I do have this. I should have added it first. So this goes, and this is why we dry fit, because we you know, discover things along the way. So this goes the straight edge flush with the border strip, and then these pieces kind of sit on top. Just kind of peeking out there. However you like it to be. Finished pages, you can see the addition of a three-part bow here. And again, this is made with that gorgeous ombre ribbon. My rounded corners kind of carrying everything through. And on the other side, here we have this added with a gold brad. Any color will do. And then the fan along with a really sweet little, uh, just a regular standard bow added to the bottom of this. Again, rounding the corners really adds a lot. Okay, so I'm going to slide this on over. And this goes on top, sliding one more sheet. And look at, we're already on pages one and two. It's amazing how quickly this comes together. You don't need a lot of time to do this phase. And what I like to is the concentration is over once you're finished with this step. After this, you can just relax and enjoy the process of uh, finishing the pages. And you can do this with your friends or at a crop, um, whatever suits your fancy. So this, of course, goes on the right edge here. I did allow a little black to show. And then the drilling prompt, I rounded. Once again, are you seeing a theme here? The, the left corners. I just like that look because it carries through with what we have going on. Now you have a set, two sets of red mats. One is larger than the other. So the smaller set is what will fit perfectly in this space. Now I know you're like, oh, but that covers everything. And yes, yes, it does. I, I know, but that's okay because we still have this gorgeous thing happening. Um, on the right side here, I added this uh, border strip and accented it with one of the red pieces just to kind of carry that red on through. I also have two vertical re uh, red mats in the upper left corner. And then this one should fit, nest perfectly onto the white mat. And that's going to go here. And it should fit right. It can sit right on top of the border strip, the area that says inhale peace, exhale happiness. So cool. Okay. This guy, you can tuck in the middle here. And then again, rounding corners is an option. This can be placed and tucked right behind here. Again, unfortunately covers that beautiful scenery, but it's okay. And I did add some, a purple bow to this. Let me show you the finished page. So here's that gorgeous bow. I just did the swallow's tail tips here on the bow and then added the fan. And whenever you have a bronze charm like this, I like to use our book binding glue. It does a beautiful job bonding metal to paper. So this charm is not going to go anywhere. And you can see how this is tucked. I only can see one of the koi. It's okay. It still works really nicely. And how this just kind of enters into that border strip a little bit. 
On the left page, it's just so simple and I chose intentionally not to really add much to it because it just, I love the simplicity and beauty of it. What I did do, however, was used a craft knife to cut along this purple area on the print so I could tuck the red mat behind it. So you can see that again on the back of this page where that tucks behind there and that's my, my cut line. Down at the bottom, I did the same thing. I just made a slot to coincide with the size of this mat so I could slide it behind there. And it's a pretty subtle thing. Um, absolutely not required. You saw it looking beautiful even without those cuts right here if you just place everything. But allowing that rounded edge here to prevail in the foreground, I think, um, really enhances the beauty of this page. So what I do next, typically, is stack this back onto... The second page so now page one is on top and then you can take the ribbon and any other remaining embellishments here's that's gonna go on this page anyway uh, my medallion my stencil you can reload this into your bag along with the instructions and let's say you took it this far and you had a crop to attend any day now when we can you bring this and you'll be the star of the show by finishing tons and tons of pages in a very small period of time because you did the bulk of the concentration when you were with me and then when you're with your friends you can finish assembling and adding pictures to your pages i hope you enjoyed putting these beautiful shoji pages together and if you like this collection be sure you join me for the shoji card kit assembly we're going to make 12 really stunning cards this month and i'll be back back here next month with our very next collection. I'll see you then.